Our adventure begins in Brindisi. It's a popular port town in Puglia that connects Italy to Greece. We're here at Tenute Rabino in one of their four vineyards that line the Adriatic Sea here in Puglia. These are Susu Mignello vineyards. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, Luigi, you were one of the first people to reintroduce Susu Mignello vines back to the Puglia region about 20 years ago. Yes. My family from the middle of 80 start to cultivate this type of beautiful uh, estate. And we reintroduce the, uh, this ancient cultivation uh, from this uh, grape with uh, Negramaro and Malvasianeva. In uh, Brindisi area, uh, there is a big tradition um, to make a particular blend from one third of Negramaro, one third Susumaniello, one third Malvasianeva. And this blend is called um, Brindisi DOC Red. Brindisi DOC Red. Got that, folks? <laughs> We will remember this. So Susu Mignello, folks at home in the United States, we're not so familiar with this, um, this grape, but I think we're going to be because it's very fun to say. Can you get us, give us some characteristics, what it might taste like? The important thing is that uh, you discover the type of soil where we cultivate this grape. In fact, we are in front of Adriatic Sea and uh, the soil is a marine soil. It's like sandy soil for seven meters above. above. So, this is the perfect condition for the maturation of the grapes, uh, but also we are in a beautiful area for the ventilation, with a good excursion night and day. And this is the second thing to make a very good Susumaniello. Elegant wine with a good present of selvatic notes, because uh, this is the character of Susumaniello. And this characteristic uh, is particular when the vines are young, I think, uh, 10 years old after the, the, this characteristic change and the, will, the, the vines produce less. And this is the problem of Susu Maniello because the production is very, very little. We call it Susu Maniello, but you have a fun um, name for it that for, for, the American, uh, for the Americans that cannot say Susu Maniello. What are we calling it? Susie. Susie. Who can't remember that? It's very easy. It's easy. Susie. <laughs> Of course, you cannot come to Puglia without talking about Primitivo. We have a fantastic uh, Primitivo here. Luigi, um, I have a little joke going because in California, we kind of think of Primitivo as our grape, but it's, it's really your grape, isn't it? Yes, the origin uh, perhaps uh, was Apulian. And uh, today we, we taste a particular uh, champion of uh, Primitivo because uh, it's a single vigneto, single vineyard, Punta Aquila 2015. And what does Punta Aquila mean? Does that mean? The point of eagle, because ah. uh, it's a particular area where uh, we produce one of the best Primitivo in our, my winery. Okay, fantastic. And speaking about the winery, obviously a really rich history going back uh, years and years. It originally started out as grape growers and then decided okay. to make the wine. Talk to us a little bit about the history. Okay, well, actually Tenute Rubino is a very young winery. It was Luigi that founded it in 1999. But we can talk about a second generation because it was his father, Tommaso, that uh, acquired the whole property. That means uh, 500 acres divided in four estates in the 1980s. So since 1999, we are in 2017, and we have reached um, 23 labels. Wow, yeah. holy smokes. And 1 million and 200,000 bottles. Wow. So in a very short time, a very big growth. And Romina, one of the things that you guys do that I think is so neat is you have the Women's Harvest, and I've seen footage of it, I haven't been able to attend, but it looks really like a really amazing event and really fun. Talk about the role of women in the winery course, and in the harvest. Yeah. So this is our 10th edition of the Women's Harvest, and it's a big event open to the public that is usually held at the beginning of September, so during harvest time, that is a very tough period. Yeah. But what we do is celebrate this wonderful 
sexual um, stuff of women, mainly of uh, women. Obviously, we have uh, uh, man workers as well. They do the hard work. Uh, but it's the women, especially um, with their delicateness and uh, ability. They're very skillful. And they have always been working with us ever since the Nude Rubino was founded. Cheers. 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 This is called the bread basket of Italy, Puglia is known as, and we're going to make bread pasta. This is the only one dish we make every night from uh, 25 years. We change menu every night, but this is the business card of Il Frantorio. It's always the same first starter from 25 years. Pizzelle is called. I'm gonna let Ariana do her thing. Aces in their places is what I learned when I worked at Red Robin. You can. Oh, me do it just like that? Yes. Okay. I thought I got fired, but I'm back in business. Okay. okay. Like this? Might not taste as good as it does every night for 25 years, but I'll do my best. <laughs> if you don't like it, I didn't make it. If you do like it, I did it. <laughs> we are sharing a sip seaside at your family Vinoteca. We've got the rosé, we have these awesome tomatoes and this fantastic, authentic Puglian dish, That's Romina, right. that you're going to yes. tell me about. But rosé is super popular here in Puglia and uh, uh, around the world. Uh, let's talk about the rosé that you brought here today and some of the characteristics. Well, it's from, you know, to think of Puglia just as a red wine region. It's uh, uh, very popular also for its rosés. If you think that just in the States, the most popular rosé was exported just from Puglia. Oh. I'm talking about 50, more than 50 years ago. Um, a rosé wine is, is not a seasonal wine for us. It's an everyday wine. So we are used to drink rosé at lunch or at dinner, and it's very versatile. That's why it's so popular. And uh, we can match it. We can pair it with all sorts of food and also with pizza. We have rosé with pizza here. So it's a, an alternative to beer. Fantastic. And we have this dish here. I, don't, I dare not try to say it because I can't remember. So tell me what this is called, Romina, and, and, and let's talk a little bit about how we make it. Exactly. So this is a freezer that is very popular here in, in South Italy, in Puglia in particular. What is it? It's a hard biscuit. Hard biscuit. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do a little demo yeah. here like we're on the cooking channel. It's really hard. Okay. You, can, <laughs> you can hear it is. And what we do is dip it into water. You have to put it into a bowl of water and keep it. Oh, you, just, you submerge it in water like Yes, this. Okay. because it has to soften. Okay. And then you take it out. We submerged our yeah. biscuit in water, all right. I guess it has to stay a little longer, Probably. but anyway. <laughs> and then you just put tomatoes on. These are cherry tomatoes from this area. You just cover the, the whole freezer with tomatoes, okay. These are the basic ingredients, okay. actually. Do we throw Some a little basil, basil on there yes, for kicks? Yes, yes. Okay, we're not going to eat ours because it didn't sit long enough. Uh, but this is the finished dish right here. And exactly. A pinch of salt. Oh, okay. Oh, this is that nice yeah. salt. Too. And obviously, some of our extra virgin olive uh -huh. oil. And then there's a special cheese that we have on top here. What is yes, this? Yes, this is a fresh cheese, and then it's named stracciatella. It's quite different from burrata and mozzarella because, as you can see, it's much softer and uh, um, it's very fresh and very tasty as well. May I serve you one? Oh, yes. You're going to have to have do. the perfect bite here with our. Tell me how to say this again. We'll try. Tell me Frieza, Frieza. Frieza, Frieza. Yeah, one time. Oh, one That's time. <laughs> Frieza, not two. Not Frieza, Frieza. Frieza. Fantastic dish, this amazing rosé, and the beautiful seaside here in the town of Brindisi. Exactly. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Brindisi. 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 I have <laughs> to go like go. this when I say it like a wave.